Uh, so those of you that don't know about Andrew, let me tell you a little bit about what he's been up to. Um, their new book, Find Momo Coast to Coast, is out now. It is a follow-up to their New York Times bestseller, Find Momo. The Instagram superstar and Andrew travel across the country visiting iconic landmarks. Look for Momo in Grand Central Station, in front of the White House, and in the French Quarter of New Orleans. Andrew is a freelance designer and photographer and traveler, and Momo has over 300,000 Instagram followers, which is probably how you all knew about today's event. <laughs> Please give a warm welcome to Andrew and Momo. So thanks for having me again. I was here about a year ago, and uh, where we were touring the first book, and then while we were touring the first book, we were shooting the second book. Um, but we had a lot of fun here, and uh, I stayed in San Francisco. The only stuff that wasn't fun was getting my tooth pulled in San Francisco. Come on, come on, up, come on up. No, it's okay. He's been in the car all day. Um, so I'm just going to talk a bit about how the whole thing unfolded, how the story happened, and show pictures of Momo when he was a puppy. Because um, why, why wouldn't I? <laughs> um, so that's Momo when he was a puppy. And I met him when he was like seven weeks old and the teeniest thing. And <laughs> closer, let's just go closer. <laughs> and then when when I touched him, he like fell on his back, and then I knew he was the what. Um, so I rubbed his belly for an hour, and then I couldn't leave without him. Those were his parents on the right. Uh, and so I started I started shooting. Uh, I guess started playing with photography like uh, many years ago and a while before I got Momo and it was um, it was something that I knew it was just a hab uh, a hobby I like doing it it was fun uh, something on the side um, and uh, and then I got Momo at one point and then he so he became my muse he was like obviously the thing that I should shoot because he was adorable and every time he moved he would he would strike a new adorable pose <laughs> like everything he did was just photogenic <laughs> and everyone he met loved him and I just felt people need to he needs to meet more people and uh, I would have never imagined this would happen but I'm very happy it did he's gotten even better with people and dogs and um, it's become quite personable I don't know how much grumpier he's gonna get with time probably a lot grumpier but right now he seems in his prime so this is good um, there he is there he is just strike a pose <laughs> um, so when Momo was two, hey, hey, I thought you were well behaved. Can you come up on the seat? Can you come sit here? Can you just stay? Can you just stay? Just watch the show. Um, so when he was two, um, we started going on little adventures around town, around my hometown, Sudbury. There wasn't a whole lot to see around there, but we went anyways, and, um, it's just like short trees and black rocks from from decades and decades of mining and mistreating the planet. Um, that's where I'm from. Um, lovely city you have here. <laughs> Very much like it. Uh, so me and Momo started going on little adventures here outside of our town. Um, and I started finding that he was very capable of sitting and staying, which isn't that impressive, but it kind of is. Um, he, uh, he, when he was a puppy, or when, when I got him, my dad said, teach him how to sit and stay, and then, you know, if anything ever goes wrong, you tell him to sit, stay, and then you can go to him. And so, I taught him that, um, and he listened very well, and it turns out I can ask him to sit and stay, and walk away from him the length of as many football fields as he can see me, 
And, uh, and he just won't budge, you know, sit there and he'll stare at me and he'll wait <laughs> until I give him the okay. And then he runs to me with like the biggest smile on his face. Like, I did it. I stayed. For so long. Um, and then when he was three, we started going on bigger adventures and traveling around and um, going to bars and going to the beach. Uh, this, was our, this was our adventure mobile at the time. It was my green Honda Element um, named Herb. And, um, <laughs> And there he is in, uh, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, when it snowed in the winter. Um, and he's just staring at me. He does this. He stares at me all the time. That's why he's always looking at me in the pictures, because it's all he does, is he stares at me. Um, and we all just kind of always went off the, the beaten path. We went, we went to places that um, you know, we, we, we thought many other people wouldn't have gone. Um, because you, you find so many interesting things, and it's, it's kind of inspiring to see things that are weird and different. Um, and then there's magical moments like this one where we found this uh, way in the back of the woods, kind of down this really bumpy trail, which uh, flattened, my, flattened my tire, which made it really hard to get back out in the, the next morning. But the next morning I, I woke up to this when Momo walked out to the water and drank some water. and It was just me and him and it was so quiet and so warm and so beautiful. And then I snapped this quick photo of him and mm -hmm. those kind of moments are what I do it for pretty much. Um, he's always handsome. Uh, and then this thing started happening with the hashtag, <coughs> and uh, it kind of started right here. Oh, hey, hey, come, look, come, look, 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 now, come on, hey, come drink some water for 30 minutes. <laughs> um, so this photo in particular was a very kind of important moment when I picked up this stick and he was staring at me waiting for me to throw it, but I didn't know, I was just checking out the stick. And then uh, I looked up, and he was just right there, by, behind that bush, poking out, staring at me. So I, I picked up the stick, and I took that photo, and then it kind of started to piece together, and I started kind of capturing him in these weird moments. Um, the third floor of building, of, you know, of beach patrol, and uh, behind a red couch, all these places. And then this photo was the very first one that kind of made sense, before all those other ones. Hey. Don't you do that. She's <laughs> <laughs> too young. <laughs> um, this was the first one that made sense. And when he was, he did this because I picked up a stick and I was going to throw it for him. He ran into the woods and he crouched down and he stared at me and I couldn't find him. So I looked around. Uh, eventually I saw him and it was that moment where I was like, this kind of is cute. I'm going to do this and make a book for my nieces and nephews. And then I did. Um, and this is the. Uh, this is the Venn diagram. So I met Momo today, who's the most mis misbehaved dog. <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is the Venn diagram of, of kind of what happened. I had a photogenic dog, I had an iPhone, and I had Instagram. And um, these are the things where, you know, how someone says, how did you do that? How did you do something? And you say, well, I didn't really do anything. There was just things that were already in place. And I just observed them and said, maybe I can piece them together and do something with it. And that's what happened. It was, uh, it was I, I call it complete accident, but also kind of, you know, these things were in front of me. And I, and I saw them, and I played with them. And, and all this happened uh, because of that, I guess, because they were in front of me. Um, so this was the hardest one in the first book. <laughs> He's bottom left quadrant. I'll give you a couple oh. seconds. Lay down. Good boy. Stay. <laughs> He's just staring at me. Um, so then we took the first book and we did a book tour. Um, the publisher said, yeah, do it. It'd be cool. And I said, okay, that'd be awesome. So we went about 15, 20,000 miles. We had 32 events. Uh, one of them was very, this very place. Um, three breakdowns. We took over 10,000 photos and I lost one tooth and that was in San Francisco. I got yanked. It wasn't pleasant, but it was nice to get it out. <laughs> um, and these are a couple of my favorites along the way. 
Um, this one is Grand Central Station. Um, I don't recommend you bring a dog in there, but we didn't get caught, so he's right there. And this one, he's with my buddy Greg, who came with me at the time, and uh, Greg is pretending to not be with them. Good job, Greg. Um, and this one here was in New Orleans at the church on the square, and uh, and also, like most of my photos, he's alone. There's not always someone hiding behind. Um, but this one, Zach is there next to him, <laughs> keeping an eye out. Um, and this was one of my favorite stops, just because it was so weird. <laughs> Giant statues of the Beatles in this like awesome style, and then President's head staring at me. Where's that? This was in, I think it's in Dallas or Houston, okay. Texas. Yeah, giant president head, Texas. <laughs> we'll find you that. Super random. My friend went there. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> this is one of those photos that he's just completely goofy and uh, <laughs> Um And then there's places where you can't really hide him that well because it's a desert of white sand and you have a black dog. <laughs> but I tried. Um, and then this is quickly becoming my favorite photo of Lola. He's barking at a stick. <laughs> and, uh, and then finding these, finding these kind of cool spots accidentally. We were just walking in Vancouver and there was this giant digital orca um, by a Canadian artist called Douglas Copeland. Um, it's very cool. Just like randomly finding these things is a nice way to come across them. Um, and then through all this, I, I learned a few lessons. Um, I mean, through having a dog, I guess I, I learned a few lessons. And anyone, I guess, who has a dog here? Let's see, all the hands. <laughs> Lots of you. Um, through having a dog, you learn a lot from them. Uh, and I'd say these are kind of four of the very important ones that I'm always learning from him. Uh, and the first one is, is, has always been to be in the moment, to be here now rather than being lost somewhere a week ago where you said something you shouldn't have said and you're playing it through your head, oh, I should have said this. And a dog, you know, doesn't care about that. He's right here, right now, all the time he's here. And um, any time that I get lost a week ago, or any time I get lost a week from now when I'm looking forward to doing something and taking myself out of the current moment, um, and I look at Momo and he's just staring at me <laughs> with his tongue out. <laughs> <laughs> He's fixated on like tree bags. Like, ah, I can't yes, give him yes. Another, right? You can give him one. <laughs> <laughs> if he likes it. Oh. Um, so to be in the moment, I got a tattoo on me. Which I believe in. Wait, what is that? It says "Be here now, be now here." It's actually a book um, and a Ray LaMontagne song, um, and it's just all very important. Um, success is always trying. That. Uh, at this project, nothing would have come from it if I wouldn't have continued to do to do it. I would if I had stopped, you know, two months after trying to take these photos of Momo hiding just because it wasn't exploding or whatever. Uh, nothing would have happened. I wouldn't be here right now. I don't know where I'd be. Um, but it was continuously giving to the project, you know. Uh, and the second book was was an effort of continuously continually giving to the project. And success isn't isn't this milestone or this point where you can quit and leave it. Success is this constant giving and constant trying and constant effort, constant loving, and then that's how it kind of comes back to you ongoingly. Um, and Momo kind of you know he's, he he embodies that um, when I'm throwing a ball for him or something, and he he misses it, and the next time I throw it, he catches it, and he doesn't care. He'll just continually get better at catching balls, and as long as I throw them. Uh, <laughs> And that kind of falls into failing fearlessly. Uh, when I throw a ball for Momo and he doesn't catch it, he, he doesn't get down on himself and say, I shouldn't try this again. He doesn't care. He, like, he, could, he could completely miss it or hit a fence trying, and he won't care. He'll just keep going the next time, and he'll try even harder because he'll be a little bit better for failing the, the previous time. So in anything, any project I've ever done, uh, there's this part of me that, that, that admits that I might fail. It might not work. I might crash and burn. But I learned so much from it that it's invaluable. It's it's uh, it's as important, if not more important, than succeeding. Um, and then to love unconditionally. Um, and that's to that's just to, to to look at a dog and, and the way that they look at everyone, mostly equally. Um, I say that because 
I don't know. He seems to be a fixed. <laughs> the one with the treats. Love unconditionally, except if someone has treats to go to them instead. Uh, but, uh, but to look at everyone equally, of course, to, to celebrate equality and, and to treat everyone the same, the same way and love everyone equally and give as much as you can to as many people as you can, regardless of anything. Um, so those are kind of four important things, and I, I mean the list goes on. If you have a dog, you, you take so much from them if you observe them. They're so they're such good humans. Um, so watch watch your dogs and learn from them. Um, except if they poop in the house, wait, do that too. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say. Um, so that's it. I'm gonna end it on that and say thank you so much for coming here. This is amazing. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll, uh, I'll do a little Q&A segment right now. I'll be happy to answer anything. Um, and then I'll be hanging out, sitting right here, um, and stamping your books and signing them, um, and just there to say hello if you don't, you can just come and say hi if you want. If you have any questions that you don't want to ask, something about pooping in the house or something, <laughs> let me know. Yes? Um, th there's talks, we're chatting about it. Um, it's like it's that thing about about giving and uh, and you know I love the project but I, I, I want to know where we should take it. The publisher kind of wants to go in a children's book direction and I like the idea um, and uh, and then I don't know I'm going to play with a few ideas and see if see if I have you know the energy for it. I also I'm splitting myself in two right now. I have uh, community <coughs> projects back in my hometown. We're working on a festival. Uh, we're working on a whole bunch of projects up there. And, uh, and so it's, it's hard to kind of choose one, one basket to put all your eggs in uh, sometimes, but I'm hoping to. The, the long, that's a long answer. I'm hoping to. Yes. How long did it take you to do that um, we did, route? We did four months. Uh, we oh, took four yeah. months, yeah. And it was, uh, we could have done it faster if we had a faster van. <laughs> <laughs> um, I brought my van yesterday to go westy. They're in Los Osos. Um, yeah, yeah. And they're 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 fantastic. They they work mostly on Vanigans, the '80s model West Palias or, uh, or, or or VW vans, camper vans. Um, so they they occasionally will work on a bus um, if you if you coax them into it. Um, they were happy to work on mine, and then um, and, and apparently everyone they told that. Oh, he's going on a he's going on a book tour, and I, he has an itinerary with a '77 um, bus, and they're like, "Really? He's doing that with a bus?" <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So I feel like um, like I'm succeeding at some kind of challenge, but at the same time, I feel like I'm just dumb enough to do it. So, <laughs> but we did it last year. It took four months, and uh, we had a few breakdowns, but it always worked out. And I mean, the breakdowns are fun too because, um, like, one of the breakdowns that I had. Um, well, all of the breakdowns that I had, I ended up meeting really great mechanics. <laughs> uh, like, awesome mechanics. Like, the kind of mechanic that will lend you a car for the day that they don't usually ever lend out. And you can go to town with their car and then bring it back and, and, and you say, what do I owe you? And they're like, oh, it's $35 for the part that I swapped out. <laughs> and uh, it's just the, the most amazing people, um, the most amazing adventures. And, of course, like exploring the, uh, the junkyard of, um, of parts buses that they have is really fun, too. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's the long answer again. <laughs> you can just request short or long answer. Okay. Yes. Yes. Just curious. Um, did you ask for permission to put Momo in certain places, or did you just beg for forgiveness? Um, it depends on the situation. It's it's like I prefer to beg for forgiveness. Um, we um, yeah. I think most of the time I'll, I'll if it's someone's personal like house or something like that I'll knock on the door. Uh, but if it's uh, if it's a public space I'm just like you know I'll I'll just do this and hopefully they okay. You know, we don't get kicked out. And there's been times where we've been kicked out. I pulled the service dog card a few times. <laughs> but, I mean, he provides a service of happiness, right? Yeah. People, so I, and sometimes they've called me on it immediately, like, do you have a card for that? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, Any more? Yes? Do you shoot all of your photos on an iPhone? Uh, no. Now okay. I shoot most of my photos on my Canon 60. Uh, occasionally it'll be the only camera I have on me or like just it'll work just as well because the lighting is great uh, but mostly I'll shoot on the 60. 
Did you plan your trip uh, in advance of where you were going, or did you just sort of randomly hear My, about it? And have you been in every state? Uh, I've almost been to all the states. I think I have <coughs> four or five that I need to visit, including Hawaii and Alaska. <laughs> My Momo can't come to Hawaii, unfortunately, because of quarantine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It sucks. But, uh, but, you know, I didn't plan uh, the itinerary, uh, the publisher did. Uh -huh. um, and I just said, just do it and just leave a couple of days between each event, especially if they're geographically far apart, so that I can get there. And they said, okay. And then I just I kind of like to you know, just do it and then see where we go. And sometimes I'll say, like, I really want to go to the West Coast. In this, in this case, we were supposed to only go as far as like Iowa. And then um, we went and got our call and then we could go to the coast. And I said, okay, we'll add it in. So that's why we're here. Yes. Hi, um, I work with Milkbone, and so I wondered what's Momo's favorite snack. Oh, awesome. Uh, favorite <laughs> snack, snack is... You favorite. don't have to say Milkbone, if it's not. Yeah. <laughs> he loves Milkbone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's probably pill pockets. Oh, those, yeah? Those little oh, yeah. pill pockets mm, for dogs. Yeah. Uh, no pills inside. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, it smells like, like, like meat and cheese all at once. Like this horrible thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's like the smellier the better. I have another question. Where's your favorite place to go together? Um, of all the places that you've been, is there like one place that you go back to or that you love we, to go? I, we, I feel like coming to the West Coast is always a milestone. Um, whenever we reach the West Coast, I feel like we're somewhere. And, and just the, it's the golden magic hour lasts forever and everything about it seems right. And I feel like if I ever get sick uh, on the West Coast, <laughs> it's like lost. Uh, but uh, no, I'd say, the, I'd say the West Coast. The South is also very awesome. Um, and then there's home. Uh, the hometown wins all the time just because it's home. Um, I think like if you travel different places, uh, kind of a piece of your heart stays in those places if you stay there for long enough and have a good enough time. Just like if you, you know, if you, if you it's, I think places are a lot like people. You'll meet them and you'll spend a lot of time with them and you'll, and you'll kind of fall in love with them. And then a part of you will be with them and you'll always want to be with them. And then places are the same way to me. Like if I'm, if I'm spending a lot of time somewhere, I'll want to go back. Mm -hmm. I want to spend more time there because I'm still there in a way. So there's a lot of places, but those are some of them. Yes? Do you have any more plans to make any of those videos that show how you put, you know, you know that video where you put Momo on the bookshelf? Will Which one was that? It was inside, it was a white bookshelf, and you did a short video. Oh, yeah, yeah. Will you make more of those? Um, I think, like, um, possibly. <laughs> but I think, you should uh, make more of them, they're super cool. I think I want to, I, I, I did a peri you know, Periscope, I was using it earlier, I'm just obsessed with it, it's hilarious. Like, you can, you can live feed whatever you're seeing at the moment, and then people can jump on Periscope and, like, watch what you're seeing, and then comment on what you're looking at. Um, I did a Periscope thing yesterday where I had him hiding and so it was a video of, like, at the moment, live video of him hiding somewhere. And then I would just kind of pan the scene and people would kind of tell me where to go. And someone said north and I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like a, I don't know, that's kind of a fun fun way to do it. If you follow me on Twitter, I'll Periscope event uh, occasionally. If you get Periscope, it notifies you when I start a Periscope. Um, so it's another app for you to get. <laughs> yes? How old is Momo? seven. Um, what day is it? Is it the 13th? 13th. 13th. It's 7 on the 19th. So he's 7 next week. His birthday. What should I do? What should we do? Just like. Go to Des Moines. If I'm a birthday in Des Moines, like you've always wanted. <laughs> um, I'll take another couple questions and then I'll, I'll get to, uh, to sign in. Yes. Yes. You. I'm taking pictures in general about over 10 years now. Uh, how old are you? Six. Three, six? A little longer than you've been born. <laughs> but I've only been seriously taking photos since Momo's been born, so you're, you're older than, than my serious photo career. Um, but uh, yeah, we've been, uh, I don't know. I started with whatever camera I had. My dad bought me the, uh, or he bought, sorry, for the family or for work or something. 
the very first like digital camera. It was this big and it was this weird <laughs> thing. Apple made it. It was uh, Apple Quick Take. And uh, I think when Steve Jobs got hired back, he, he said no more of that. <laughs> and, uh, it was this really small, really horrible digital camera and I was taking all these pictures with it and they're really bad quality. I was bringing them into my really slow computer and like having a lot of fun with it. And then eventually I got myself a point and shoot, just a little camera. And then I, I challenged myself to take a photo every single day. And, uh, and post it, which was like, it's like Instagram now, but before Instagram, this was more <laughs> rare and challenging. But I took a photo every day uh, for uh, like three years or something like that. And it just felt like that kind of challenge is the one, you know, you spend more time with something and you get better at it. So I just wanted to spend a lot of time with photography. Where did you post it? Where? Yeah. Um, uh, Ping pong. <coughs> it was my, my blog was called Ping Pong. Okay. And uh, it was on this website called My Expressions. <laughs> so it's easy. <laughs> but I don't even know if it's still online. Should we look for it? <laughs> I think the internet is here. Yeah, we have internet. Let's look. <laughs> I hope it doesn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably changed that name. Oh, so yeah, there it is. Where is it? Mike, just right. keep going. Oh, see. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You're like really. Image more. Yeah. 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 Oh no, that's a. <coughs> that's a thing. Myexpressions.com. Oh dear. Bridal shower invitations. Oh. <laughs> Something has changed on the internet. <laughs> okay, I better stop. <laughs> Have you taken him to Momo's in San Francisco, the restaurant? No. Right is across it? from the oh, ballpark? Oh, is it Momo? Or just no, it's Momo's? Momo's. It's called Momo's. It's right really? across from AT&T yeah. Park. need to go. Oh. Yeah, they will, yeah. yeah. But I can't, I'll, I'll just try to bring him inside and be like, his name. <laughs> yeah. I'll get him to do that. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, yeah, we're going to go to Momo. Okay, we're going to go to Momo? <laughs> um, so I'll hang out here now. And if you have any more questions, you can ask me in person. So, Andrew, thank you so yes. much for coming. Thank you.